The 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, the abolition of slavery from 1865, as read by the happy president. Section 1. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Section 2. Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. That's it. That's the entire Amendment 13 to the United States Constitution. It took me 40 seconds to read it, and it abolishes, it abolishes slavery in the United States. But it doesn't define what slavery is. It doesn't define who might have been a slave. Like there is, there uh, just uses slavery and involuntary servitude. So what does that really mean? What are we abolishing here? And if there was such a race war then, this, this amendment didn't really do anything about the race issue. It just it, it, it defined what, it didn't even define what a slave or an involuntary servant was. Maybe we need to look back in previous constitutional history, which we will do in order to determine this, but this is a very short amendment to the Constitution. I'm all about people being free, just so you know about my opinions of, I believe that you are a free person in and of yourself as you are right now. The things you have control over most immediately are your bones and your emotions. Take control of your skeleton and how you feel about yourself. And then you no longer play the role that was assigned to you when you were first born here. Uh, to get back into how short the 13th Amendment is, we're going to go to Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3 of the United States Constitution. Ta -ta -da! And it was in eight, 1787, so almost like 90 years, 88 years before uh, this. Uh, here we go. Section 2, Clause 3. Representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states which may be included within this union according to their representative numbers, which shall be determined by adding to the whole number of free persons. So persons is uh, capitalized in this sentence including those bound to service and services capitalized for a term of years and T and Y are capitalized in that and excluding Indians capitalized not taxed three-fifths of all other persons and th that persons is capitalized I think the capitalization is important in this sentence because it uh, indicates the importance of things. Usually you capitalize something of importance and or the beginning of a sentence and then everything else is under case. Uh, <clears throat> this is about the taxes of so this is the three-fifths compromise um, which is not comfortable to talk about, but it is saying that some people are worth uh, one, ho one whole thing and some people are worth three-fifths of that whole thing that that one person was worth, um, which is kind of terrible to put in here. Um, again, it, but it doesn't talk about any sort of, it doesn't have any descriptors. We don't have descriptors of sort of like, the only descriptions we have are Indians that are really making their way into the Constitution. So we must have really been like, hey, Mother Earth's people, let's get, like, let's get rid of you while we were there. Sorry, no offense, I love you, but that seems to be the thing. But when we, 
when we actually look at these clauses that talked about slavery, it has nothing to do with race. Why am I getting to this point? Um, I, I guess I, I'm a, I think that people are slaves if you don't love the life that you have right now. And that's a pretty bold claim to go upon. Okay, we're going to go to the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which happens to not be in the book that I'm reading right now, which is called the U.S. Constitution and Other Writings. But for some reason, they discluded the 14th and 15th Amendment in this book. So I needed to look it up on the Internet in order to get there. And I did. And I... And I found it. Amendment 14, Section 1. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life liberty or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Okay, this seems very general and, and easy. This was, I guess it's just saying all persons. It doesn't even say anything different about sex or gender or race or creed or religious belief, it's just all persons born or naturalized in the United States. So I guess it's like if you made it here, then you get all the rights to be here. Okay, let's read section two, hold on. Representatives shall be apportioned amongst the several states according to their respective numbers, counting the whole number of persons in each state excluding Indians not taxed. Uh, here's where we get into discrimination. It's the Indians being, because they're not paying taxes, so I guess they don't get to vote or don't get to have a right into this government. But I guess we're still letting to live them, let them live here in this point in this constitution. <clears throat> but when the right to vote in any election for the choice of electors for president and vice president of the United States, representatives in Congress, the executive and judicial officers of a state or the members of the legislature thereof is denied to any of the male inhabitants of such state, of such state being 21 years of age and citizens of the United States or in any way abridged except for the participation in rebellion or other crime, the basis of representation therein shall be reduced in the proportion within the number of such male citizens shall bear to the whole number of male citizens 21 years of age in such state. Okay, so this go this kind of takes away the three-fifths compromise, being like any adult male over 21 counts as a whole human in that state, which for a while, in order, like they, they did do consensuses, is like certain people were le worth less than less peop other people. And that was just how they calculated society. But why are we calculating society in the first place? Anyway, let's go to section three. Section three. No person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or any, under any state who, having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies of thereof. But Congress may, by a vote of two-thirds of each house, remove such a disability. I have no idea what this means. I guess of like, if you've not held your beliefs in the same belief of the United States and you couldn't hold an office, but if you didn't for a while, 
somebody could override it and be like, you cool now. <sighs> okay, section four. <clears throat> what the fuck? This is, this is what law students, is this what we're reading? This is what law students study? We're almost done. Thank goodness. Okay, section four. The validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law including debts incurred for payment of pensions and bounties for services and suppressing insurrection or rebellion. Wait, what? Shall not be questioned. Because we did insurrect things. So this is early on. We, insurrection was a thing that the United States needed in order to become the United States, just so you know. I'm salivating right now. Okay, um... But neither the United States nor any state shall assume or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of insurrection or rebellion against the United States or any claim for the loss or emancipation of any slave. But all such debts, obligations, and claims shall be held illegal and void. I have no idea what this section means. God, this is what law students do. This is, sounds terrible. Why would you do this to yourself? Hold on, the validity of public debt, United States, authorized by law, including debts incurred for payment of impediment. It's something about rebellion. You can't incur debts against rebellion. That's about all I can say. Section five, anyway, we'll move on. Uh, apparently they say when you don't get a question, you just move on and you just keep going. So you, so you just maybe you can get the most questions right instead of focusing on the one question you can't. <sighs> Section 5. The Congress shall have power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of this article. Oh, that's, that's kind of how they pr close out all of these things. of like say, Just saying, hey, we made a Congress, we made a thing that can enforce this. All right. Um, so it's equal protection of the laws, apparently. No, it's, it's, it's just, but it doesn't, there's no race or creed, like, it's, it's still pretty general as far as my interpretation of this act. Okay, what's, we do have a next one. Which one is it? We're only on the 14th. We still got the 15th, y'all. Oh, this one is when actually things get real. It's for, for reals. The 15th Amendment is when we actually bring a creed and race and gender into shit, which before we didn't. We didn't, no one defined a slave in, in the 13th Amendment to be someone of African descent that was brought here to work the fields. That was not in the Constitution. It was just the term slavery. And at no point was it defined. But, God, it's so weird because so many of the other articles in our Constitution are so well defined. As in, like, what? how do you buy Alaska? Like, that's longer, that, that amendment is longer than how to free slavery. Yeah. All right, let's get, okay. Thank you for joining me on this weird journey. For me, it is February 1st, 2021. I'm not sure what day it is for you, but okay, here we go. For the 15th Amendment, Section 1. The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state by account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Number, section 2. The Congress shall have the power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. Okay, so this one might be just as short as the 13th Amendment. And these are supposedly very important amendments according to equal rights in the United States as far as who can participate in what games we play. And I guess the question is, why do we want to play in the United States games? Wow, what am I getting into? I'm beyond this. Uh, I, I, my biggest point is that I don't know the Constitution very well. My journey is to learn the Constitution better. Uh, today, I learned the 13th Amendment, 14th Amendment, and 15th Amendment, which are the Reconstruction Amendments. 
Um, they did a lot to equalize people, but I also don't know that they defined what didn't equalize them beforehand, that we don't even know what we were fighting. <clears throat> Yeah, like that there's no definition for the word slavery in our constitution. I sound weird for asking this question, but like it's not defined by what you look like. I want to thank you for joining me on this what it, weird journey. Uh, we've been together for about 15, 16 minutes now. I hope you have a wonderful day today. And I hope you wonder what uh, the freedom that it is that you have. And what you need to give yourself the freedoms to live the life you want. Is it amendments to the Constitution? Or is it something inside of yourself right now that you can say, hey, I can have this. Let's do this. Like me, I'm doing a podcast, even though I don't think I deserve to have a podcast, but I'm doing it because everyone needs a voice. Everyone has a voice, right? Let's use it. Let's use our voices collectively for the best use of all possible. Thank you. This is the Happy President. This was episode one from one to from from two one two one, February second two thousand twenty one. Thank you very much. <laughs>